I sort of made a pledge to myself a while ago, you know, when I'm on Facebook, just, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, I don't know, I call it planned ignoring. Like when you see something on there and you think it's ridiculous, just don't, don't respond to it. Just move on, move on. Don't, don't take any notice. Don't look at it. But sometimes there's, you know, you'll read something and it's just so stupid and so ignorant and hateful and it, it just, oh, it just happened the other day. A friend of mine had posted something which was, you know, a, a very kind of shocking and controversial image of a, a woman whose boyfriend had beaten her very brutally and with a comment basically saying domestic violence is never okay, which... I would have thought pretty well spoke for itself, but three comments in, there's a comment by some guy saying to the effect that, well, basically, it was really her choice and women really need to respect themselves more and have better standards for themselves and they should be given, you know, they should actually realise that they need to make better choices in their life. Uh, and it's basically putting it back on the woman. It was kind of one of those very... So upsetting. I, I went, wow, that, that kind of view is almost a form of violence in itself. That view that, that, that blame the victim and the victim's fault because they stayed there. It's such a reductionist point of view. And it's, you know, it's, not, it's hard enough for people, let alone shaming and blaming them because, you know, it was their fault. I mean, it, it's such a convenient thing, you know, to say that, you know, it's the victim's problem because then nobody else has to deal with it. Nobody has to look at their society and say, how do we live somewhere that, you know, where this happens, where this, this would perpetuate this over and over. You know, so I did feel, you know, inside myself, actually the statement made me feel quite violent, you know, just for an instant. And then I had to sort of, you know, flood it with a little bit of compassion and understanding and actually realised that statement isn't like the guy's not an ideological lone gunman i mean that is basically the representation what that particular person said of i think a very well held belief about uh, women and domestic violence you know that somehow they're the auteurs of their own you know their own fall of their own violence that somehow there's a little less empathy for them because you know they could have got just walked out you know they weren't abducted they chose to be there and somehow the compassion truck just kind of pulls up short of actually opening the doors and letting them in and saying, well, sorry, girls, you know, you really should have turned it around. I just think it's weird. Like, we live in a country where I think it's, you know, at least one, sometimes more, you know, a woman is killed every week by her current partner or a former partner. And you think, wow. You know, where's my terror alert for that? Where's my terror alert as a woman? I mean, it's more dangerous for me in my home than it is going to any airport anywhere in the world, statistically. So, you know, where's our terror alert? Because people don't care, I think, really. I think there's the end of the thing, societally. It's just not quite as important as other, other things. And that statement really upset me because I think, for me, it underpinned why it's such a non-issue, why we seem to not really, hardly even gets a blip on the radar. You're lucky to see, you know, the murder of someone's mother, sister or daughter make, you know, a paragraph on page four of a newspaper. It kind of just goes, oh, there's another one. Here we go. She should have left. There she is. She's gone now. And it just brings it back to that thing. My, well, I suppose my real problem with that statement is, and it's not just the person, it's the fact it represents a whole lot of ignorance, is that one, it's just a given, I suppose, except it's just a given that, you know, violence towards women is normal, normalised. It's fine, we, we can't change that, so why don't we just get the women to leave? That, to me, I find really, that is the absolute pinnacle of patriarchal thinking. The second thing that I find, you know, sort of upsetting, about that, this idea of that, that women should change their standards, that there's sort of two different sorts of women, women who don't allow themselves to get into, you know, situations of violence and there's things to happen to them, and women who, who do. And clearly, I mean, why should we spend our time worrying about the people, women who do? Because clearly they are just stupid, you know, sort of bad choice-making sluts and we shouldn't worry about them. I was, you know, I grew up and my mother lived in, and we had domestic violence when I was a kid, you know, and then I went into relationships where I experienced it as an adult woman. So it never actually occurred to me that it was actually my fault and that, you know, <laughs> as it occurs now, thankfully to that statement, I realised that, in fact, I am just a stupid slut and probably that was probably why it happened. But 
that's the belief system that it is really, and it's this thing on choice, you know, it's the whole, I was being satirical by the way, <laughs> there is that belief around choice and that probably upset me the most when you think this concept of choice, it's, you know, like choice is a, a given, like choice is a, a level playing field for all, like all people, you know, are actually afforded the same sorts of choices and the condition and narrative which surrounds that is all equal because it's not. It just isn't. I suppose if you're a heterosexual, white, middle class, well educated bloke who was brought up in a family without any trauma or or other psychosociological impacts, then yeah. I reckon choice would be pretty damn good for you, but for the rest of the people that are dealing with, you know, race and gender and sexuality and perhaps what they've been exposed to and poverty, addiction and all those issues, choice really is a very different kind of kettle of fish. I mean, choice doesn't just happen like that. It's really good. Like, choice is this lovely belief of capitalism that you can determine your own outcome, which is such a lovely belief if you're trying to sell stuff. And if you really, if you want to put your entire neat little belief system into a bumper sticker and fucking shove it on a car, then it's perfect because it's so reductionist and it's so good. Particularly if you're someone like Richard Branson and your choice you know, has, you know, has actually been an incredible yield, you know, and you're living in fabulous places as opposed to someone living in the slums of, you know, somewhere like, you know, Delhi, where I suppose it's not so good with the choices. The choice is just, it's relative. I, I, I can't understand how someone wouldn't say that. That, you know, it's not just about choosing something. Is that the, the mechanisms that exist that affect people's choices whether about whatever choices they make not just in domestic violence the questions are bigger like you know why does why doesn't a woman leave you know why don't anorexics just eat why don't depressed people cheer up why don't alcoholics just stop drinking why don't fat people just fucking stop eating you know <laughs> why don't stupid people read books you know, and find something out about how actually humans live because you can't, you can't reduce everything to this neat little thing about choice. I think if we lived in a world where, you know, self-determinism, you know, was actually completely related to self-actualization, that was the only factor we'd live in a very different type of world, but we don't. We don't live like that. If I make a choice to get Botox, you know, is that because it's my right to go and choose to get Botox so I don't have a wrinkly forehead and crinkly little eyes? Or is that a choice that I've made because I'm somehow being conditioned to believe that an ageing face or my ageing face is unattractive? Which, which empowers my choice? How do I know? You've got to do some analysis on that. And I really do think at the end of the day that statements like that are just so reprehensible and so violent and lacking compassion. And I do think at the end of the day, you know, if we want to change things, you want to address domestic violence, then you have to change your socioeconomic situation. You've got to look at issues of addiction and mental health and poverty, you've got to make a level playing field for all across the board and then, and maybe only then, you can start talking about things like choice. I should choose not to read Facebook actually. <laughs> it's very upsetting. Oh.